Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to introduce uh, a second type of annotation search. So if you're not already familiar with searches using the underscore character to search for the primary annotation, the first sort of annotation that a corpus has, then I suggest that you familiarize yourself with that first. Okay, so the primary annotation, which is the first uh, which is the first level of annotation in each CQP web corpus is usually a part of speech tag because that's the most common kind of corpus annotation at the word level. Something that's only slightly less frequent is lemma annotation and therefore the secondary level of annotation in a CQP web corpus if it exists is usually a lemma. Now note that this is um, this is dependent on how exactly a corpus has been set up. So it's not necessarily the case that the secondary annotation is a lemma, but it usually is. Um, and if not, then the, your system administrator will probably have told you about it. Anyway, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the linguistic theory involved here, a lemma, also sometimes called a headword or a lexeme, is when we annotate each word with the uh, dictionary head word of which it is a form. Now what this means then is that the words are uh, grouped together into families of word forms that are related by being inflectional variants of a single uh, word in the lexicon of the language in question. So to give a concrete example, in English, nouns can be either singular or plural. The singular plural distinction is an inflectional one, it's a matter of grammar, it's not a matter of word creation. And therefore, for any given word, its singular form and its plural form are part of the same lemma. Right? And that's why we sometimes say they are the same word in some sense. So if you have, for example, the word uh, uh, hat and the word hats, those two words belong to the same lemma, hat, they are grouped under the same head word, and therefore if we do a lemma search, then uh, we would expect to find those inflectional variants. This is in many ways a more elegant way of doing something that uh, you can also do with um, uh, wildcard characters in a word search. So for example, if you have walk, which is a very straightforward verb, that has many forms uh, and we can specify them using alternatives in the search term. So there is walk, nothing, there is walks, there is ing, walking, there is walked. So that search will find all the different forms of the verb walk all in one go. However, this gets difficult with um, irregular verbs. So for example, if you try and do the same thing with go, then you kind of have to do the whole thing inside the brackets because there is no other way of getting went in there. So, so doing it this way gets clunky quite fast. Uh, it's much more efficient if the corpus has lemma annotation to use that. So how do we access lemma annotation, or indeed the secondary annotation, whatever it is? And again, remember that this may differ um, uh, depending on how your corpus has been set up. It's done using these brackets here, the curly brackets, or sometimes people call them braces. Anything that you type inside braces will be interpreted as a search for a lemma. So the word walk on its own means search for any word that consists of W-A-L-K. The word walk inside braces means find any word that is annotated with the lemma of walk. So let's have a look. If we start query now You will see indeed straight away that we have here examples of walked, 
walk, walking. Do we have a walks? Yes, we have a walks as well. So that illustrates very quickly how the lemma works. Uh, how, how the uh, lemma search works. The secondary annotation query is case insensitive. So if I type the word walk in capital letters, I should get exactly the same set of results. Yes. Note that if there are two lemmas that differ by part of speech but have the same head word, then a lemma search will not distinguish them. So, for example, let's take the word break. The word break can be either a verb or a noun. If we search for the lemma break, then we will get both the noun, which is break or breaks, singular plural, and the verb break, breaks, broken, breaking, and so on. So, let's just run that to illustrate the point. So, most of these are verbs. Do we have any nouns? Ah, here we are. If women take breaks to have babies. So, breaks there is a noun. The point is that because the verb forms and the nouns forms, although they are not part of the same lemma, uh, the verb forms and the noun forms uh, have the same base form, and it's the base form that is annotated. One other thing to be aware of is that lemmatization schemes sometimes have tricks in them that you might need to be aware of. So, for instance, the word broken, sticking on the topic of the example of break, uh, the word broken is often a form of break, and in that case it will be lemmatized as break. However, there are some lemmatization schemes, including the one that I use on my corpora, and that's why you're saying it here, where the word broken can also be its own lemma. So, some we saw before when we put break in the uh, braces that um, uh, that some of those examples were broken, but if we put broken itself in the braces, we will see a different set of examples. None of which would be found if you search for break as a lemma. So why are these different? Well, the reason that these examples of broken are different is that these are examples where broken is being used as an adjective. And indeed, if you hover on the tag, you should be able to see broken JJ uh, as the tag. Um, JJ is the tag in this particular corpus for an adjective. And the rules of this particular lemmatization scheme say that when broken is an adjective instead of a past participle, it is part of a different lemma. This is just a general, this is just a single illustration of the particular point that you should always uh, make sure that you are aware of how an annotation scheme has been devised and how it's been uh, made to function if you are going to use corpus annotation in a search system such as CQP Web. And that point's obviously not uh, specific to CQP Web. It could apply to any corpus search system that lets you do things like search for tags or search for lemmas. That's all. Thank you for listening.